The tractor, pulling 100 wheels full of sharp spikes, runs around on the field, and all the weeds will be cleaned up. This is a very special agricultural weed cutter. The tractor is a regular tractor, but the weed cutter is not. Each wheel is welded with 16 small blades on the outer edge. The direction of the blade is opposite to the direction of the tractor. In this way, the tractor just needs to keep moving forward, and the blade wheel at the back will naturally stab into the ground and pull up the weeds. It's worth noting that this weed cutter can be used not only before planting, even when the field has been planted with crops the machine can still continue to use, because the depth of the blade stabbing into the ground is only 13 centimeter, much lower than the root of the crop. Therefore, the cutting blade does not harm the crops. In order to minimize the size of the device as much as possible, people designed two spiked wheels into a group. There are a total of 50 groups. Under a mechanical bar hangs two wheels. They are arranged diagonally in the front and back positions. The working width can reach 6.3 meters, and to prevent the machine from obstructing traffic after hitting the road, it can also be portable. When not in use, control the two mechanical crossbars on both sides to shrink. 6.3 meters immediately becomes 3.15 meters. So, have you seen the power of mechanical technology in agriculture? A gentle clamp and the smooth round log is split in half. This wood splitting machine, which saves time and effort, has truly won people over. A mechanical clamp is installed on a small excavator. One side of the clamp is the clamping plate, the other side is the splitting knife. The control clamp clamps the wood, and the splitting knife splits the wood under the push of the hydraulic system. And it can not only split small wood, after installing a sliding gear on the handle, it can split wood horizontally. The maximum length of split wood can reach 80 centimeter, using this machine to split wood, the work efficiency is very high, and it can split tons of wood in an hour. In addition, there is a rather special type of wood splitting machine, replacing the mechanical clamp with a conical drill bit, continuously rotating while drilling into the wood, pushing the wood out from the middle. The surface of this drill bit is full of spiral patterns like a screw. It will not slip when drilling into the wood. Combined with a large hydraulic system, it makes the work of splitting firewood very easy. This is a wood splitting machine invented for large wood. Not only that, there is an even larger wood splitting machine, clamping the giant wood onto a fixed rail. The end of the rail is a cross-shaped knife head. At that time, the hydraulic push plate at the back will push the wood to the knife head. In a blink of an eye, a piece of wood has been cut into four parts. So, are these machines useful? With a click, a wall suddenly stands up on the flat deck of the aircraft carrier. It is directly aligned with the tail of the aircraft, and with it, the aircraft dares to take off normally. Its name is the deflector, and its main function is to guide airflow and increase reverse thrust. You need to know that the deck of the aircraft carrier is only so long, and the aircraft needs to reach takeoff speed in a very short time. This means that the engine must operate at full power, during which a large amount of heat and energy is generated. We have a small experiment. The engine is directed at a snow wall in front. When the engine reaches maximum speed and reverses, the snow wall will melt at a speed visible to the naked eye. The aircraft engine is hundreds of times larger than it, you can imagine. If this air wave is allowed to spread freely on the deck, the consequences are unimaginable. Therefore, people have designed this kind of deflector. It stands behind the aircraft in a slightly inclined state. When the engine starts, the air wave generated will blow directly onto the deflector and then be guided up along the deflector. And, in order not to let the high temperature airflow melt the deflector, people also add a water cooling system behind the deflector. Every time it is used, it will circulate four tons of seawater to cool the deflector. This can withstand an air wave of high temperature of 2,000 degrees. It is worth noting that a small part of the air wave blowing on the deflector will be pushed back, helping the aircraft take off better. So, do you want to become a pilot? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The ship sways but refuses to fall. The captain here is fully awake. The reason it sways is because this ship is supposed to move like this. Its name is the swaying log pusher. Its main job is to push the floating logs on the water. When the cargo ship unloads the wood, the log pusher is responsible for arranging the floating logs on the water to the dock. And when it needs to be placed on the cargo ship, it is also responsible for arranging for the machinery to hook the wood on the cargo ship. No matter what the job is, the log pusher needs to move between the gaps of the wood. In addition, it has strong power. To ensure its own stability, the 
the hull is designed to be small and thick. With its small size, combined with the 90 degree rotating propeller at the bottom, it can complete the turn in place, and the thick part of the hull can prevent it from overturning. Not only that, the bow position is also added with a row of anti-slip bars. When pushing the wood to move, it can increase the friction efficiency and increase the transportation speed. Notably, there are many benefits to transporting wood by water. The wood that has just been cut down is very wet inside and outside, but after a while, it will become moist inside and dry outside. This is not good for processing, but going by water can prevent this situation from happening. In addition, the amount of wood transported is very large. The weight of tens of thousands of tons is more suitable for waterways. Finally, it is the most cost-saving. But the important thing is, do you have to be a person who doesn't get seasick when controlling this ship? Tilt open, rotate, it can even have each wheel go in a different direction. This machine is like a crab called Hydra. It is a type of underwater tunneling machine, mainly used to help offshore power plants distribute electricity underwater. Like traditional tunneling machines, it is equipped with a three meter long tunneling chain. Whether it's mud or rock, it can easily complete the tunneling task. The difference is that it is also designed with four independently controlled conveyor belt wheels capable of powerful movement. Being able to go in each direction really means it is not limited by terrain. Even if one wheel encounters an obstacle, the other wheels will not be affected. The operating principle is very simple. When the transport ship arrives at the designated point, it uses a rope to slowly lower the tunneling machine into the water. When it reaches the seabed, all work is remotely controlled from the control room. First, drop the tunneling chain at the bottom of the machine, then follow the designed path to tunnel. The surface of the conveyor belt is covered with hard saw teeth. The tunneling performance is very high. After completing the tunneling, control the mechanical arm in front of the machine to fall, grab the power cable next to it and place it in the tunnel. Considering the entire process, it can shorten the installation time and ensure human safety. So is it interesting? Chopping down a tree, cutting it, and splitting it into pieces, all in just a few minutes. This large tree has been broken down into countless small blocks of wood. This unimaginable wood splitter is widely used in camps. To split the wood into blocks right at the extraction site, the operating principle is very simple. Initially, control the mechanical arm to align it with the tree on the ground, lift the mechanical arm to let the tree completely fall down. Then, the hydraulic push plate on the splitting device will push the blade horizontally to cut. Cutting the tree into small sections, the split pieces of wood fall out the tree above will fall down again. Then repeat the process just now. Very quickly, a large tree has been cut into a dozen pieces of wood. If you want smaller blocks of wood, add a blade directing the tree branches at the exit. Thus, you can see the image at the beginning of the video. The wood that has been divided into sections will continue to be split in half. Control the machine to the top of the transport vehicle. The split block of wood will fall directly onto the head of the vehicle, not only improving transport efficiency, but also shortening processing time. In addition, there is also a high-performance woodcutter. After the two mechanical arms grip the tree trunk, the electric saw in the middle position will lower to cut. Then, the mechanical arm will grip the tree trunk and push it forward. Push the tree trunk into the cutting blade. Continuous cutting. Continuous pushing. In a moment, a tree trunk has been split into wood chips. How about that? Not like those muscular guys splitting wood with an axe, right? Just a gentle tap and the tractor starts. The operating principle is different from lightly tapping a broken TV to fix it because the tractor is not broken at all. Its way of starting is just a light tap. The tapping location is an explosive bullet. The blank bullet that is hit will emit high temperature compressed gas. It will push the turbine to rotate, turning the gears. From there, the engine starts. This starting device is called a Kaufman starter engine. Compared to the traditional way of starting with a lever, it is indeed much more polite. However, relying solely on the energy of a blank bullet is not enough to ignite the engine. Therefore, after placing the blank bullet, the driver will also place a special piece of paper that has been burned into the machine in front of the engine. It will act like a spark plug, then just lightly tap on the butt of the blank bullet, the tractor will start. Notably, this way of starting was initially applied to airplanes. At that time, airplanes also used the lever starting method. The pilot hadn't had time to get on the plane, and a lot of strength had been consumed. Therefore, people researched the Kaufman starter engine, and the airplane uses more and larger blank bullets. However, as the technology of the industry develops, people no longer use this method. Here they use it as a preservation for history. So, would you like to try driving them? 
You can't see the digging equipment, but you can see the soil in the bucket increasing and eventually overflowing. This is the amazing conveyor excavator. The earth excavator is this continuously rotating conveyor belt whose job is to scoop up the soil and transport it into the bucket. Looking down from above with the continuous rotation of the excavation and transport conveyor belt, a large amount of soil also keeps moving backwards. When fully loaded, a bucket can hold 1.5 tons of soil. It was specially invented for leveling work at construction sites. It should be noted that traditional earth excavators or diggers can only dig in small areas and at great depths. The digging performance on the hillside is not bad, but when faced with the task of producing soil with a large area and small depth, it is a bit inadequate. Therefore, the conveyor excavator was invented. The cutting and transporting conveyor is made up of countless blades. It not only transports the soil that rises on the surface, but also will stab into the position 30 centimeter below the ground. After the blade breaks the soil under the extension of the chain, the blade continues to transport the soil upwards. When it reaches the bottom of the machine, it automatically falls into the bucket. Then, the driver will control the cutting and transporting conveyor to lift up, transport the soil to the designated position and unload. The work efficiency is very high. It can produce and transport 10 tons per hour. So, isn't this very interesting? Cutting tree branches, cutting one by one is too tiring, so cut in rows. Driving a fire wheel like tree cutting machine passing by, the messy tree tops were neatly trimmed. The machine is divided into two parts. The lower part is a regular tractor. On top of it are two wheels like fire wheels. Each wheel has three or four mechanical arms. The top of the mechanical arm is a rotating cutting disc. After adjusting the cutting height and angle, the cutting disc will rotate quickly to cut, leaving no leaves. It can cut two rows of large trees at once. The work efficiency is very high. Cut 200 large trees per hour, and it has multiple versions. The place to be cut does not necessarily have to be the top of the tree. The mechanical arm can be controlled. When passing a row of large trees, the large tree can be neatly trimmed in the direction of the branches. However, the cutting accuracy of this machine is limited. It can only cut roughly. If you want to cut smaller trees, you will have to change to another machine. It works like shaving. Inside the cutting device are three parallel cutting discs. Control the cutting device to pass over the top or a row. The row of trees immediately becomes flat. How about that? Isn't it interesting? Dragging along 500 iron rods, it skims a bit on the ground. It can remove the remaining parts of the plants and weeds. This is a necessary task before planting new crops. Each iron rod on top is connected to a spring. When the iron rod comes into contact with the weed root, the resistance will stretch the spring above. When it reaches a certain length, the spring will contract. Pull the iron rod to separate the weed roots from the soil. 500 iron rods move at a high density in a small area. It's like a comb. Comb out the weeds and other things that hinder the growth of crops in the soil. Moreover, this machine can not only be used before planting. Even when the crops have grown to half, weeds can still be removed. Because at this time, the weed root is much deeper than the crop. The iron rod can only remove shallow weed roots. It does not affect the crops. This can also loosen the soil. It's just that the effect is very small. If you really want to loosen the soil for the crop field, you have to replace it with another machine. The most magical place of it is that it can draw circles to loosen the soil. This is thanks to the color analyzer equipped on the machine. The camera will transmit real-time images to the analyzer. The dark green detected is the crop. This kind of high-precision soil loosening machine can significantly increase crop yield. High technology is also needed in agriculture, isn't it? 